Hello again guys and welcome to another video. Today we are doing a part three of the alternate future of the world. Uh, in the last two, we had a war up here in North Africa, a war in East Africa. And first things first, one thing I should mention, no, this map isn't gonna be exactly the same and that is because I forgot to save the last map and it got reset. So most of the borders are very similar, but there might be some subtle differences. So if you do notice that, sorry about the inconvenience, but there's nothing I can really do about it. Most of the borders are the same, and I actually improved upon some. So the first thing I wanna do in this video is show you basically the alliance map. And that's basically just gonna include uh, a few main alliances. One over here in North Africa between Egypt, Libya, Sudan. That's an okayly sized one. We also see the pink alliance here between Russia. We have Armenia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan. Uh, China actually doesn't join for now, but they probably will soon enough. Ukraine, Belarus. Serbia wants to join. So, well, they do eventually. That's a bit delayed, but Serbia does eventually join. We also see Iran, Syria, blah, blah, blah. China, yeah, I'd say China would probably join by now. North Korea, Turkmenistan, and we see Pakistan joining, but Afghanistan stays out for now. So that's the east. As for the west, I'll be putting them in this kind of purplish, bluish color. Don't count the west out just yet. Actually, could I just go ahead and do color it in like this because that would be much faster and actually yes after the recent events um basically this isn't just nato anymore this is basically just the western world they don't really have a name we should probably get them a name yeah i'll think about that we need a new name for this alliance because now it is no longer just nato it is like the entirety of the west has now been put under like one alliance Israel joins in, Cyprus, we see, of course, Japan joins in, South Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, the Philippines, Australia, New Zealand join in, we see, of course, the USA and Canada. They both join in. And up down here in the south, Colombia and Venezuela both join in, but Brazil stays out as there are more alliances in this world, and one of those is the South American Pact between Brazil, Chile, Ecuador, Guyana, and Paraguay for now, but more of these countries do want to join in the future. And also on this map to begin with, there was really only one alliance, NATO. I know, there used to be the Rio Pact down here, a bunch of other pacts. We're just saying that those all got kind of just, just taken away. We see the Gulf Shield Pact. Oh, and Yemen's a part of the Pink Pact. And is there any more that I'm forgetting? Yep, the East Africans. We also see this being a thing. So yeah, the world, a majority of the countries are inside of an alliance or at least allied with somebody. We see the East, the West, the South American Defense Treaties, the North and Eastern African, like, I guess they're rivals. I think the Easterners are a bit stronger, but <clears throat> it'll be close. We see the Saudi Arabian Defense Organization, I guess. And yeah, that's about it. And the North African, but this is mostly to help in wars. So let's go ahead and after I've shown you all this map, we can take it all away. Great. So yeah, that's basically what the alliances are like right now. So let's keep going and the first thing that's gonna happen 
is that this kind of North African country is going to want to expand. So Egypt, together with Libya and Sudan, declare war in the great country of Chad. Now in real life, of course, the Chadian army would demolish them all. <coughs> But sadly, in this universe, we're trying to make it a bit more realistic, seeing as it is alternate future. And that's not going to be happening. So Sudanese troops begin to push into the south. Meanwhile, Libyans try to push into the north, but it doesn't really do much. And the main attack is here in the south, which goes very well for them. And Chad is cut in half. All of the southern parts, which are the most like powerful parts, I guess you could say, are destroyed. The push-up north begins until it's all basically desert. And Chad surrenders. That was a quick war. Sadly for Chad. These guys want some land. After that, Chad is forced to join their alliance. And these guys are basically just trying to expand themselves to, I mean, it sounds kind of obvious, but make themselves stronger so that they can rival the East Africans better. Actually, I don't like this as a straight line. Get that Africa is like where the straight lines are, but like, yeah, no, it doesn't look good. So let's make it a bit more curvy. There we go, much better. And as I said, Chad does lose some land, but the worst punishment here is their new government, which is completely allied with the Egyptians, the Libyans, and the Sudanese. So now we have all four of these countries being united, and they go on one more war, and that is to attack Niger. And once again, this is just to expand their influence and make themselves more of a world player. As in the world right now, they're just seen as a small alliance. So down here in the south, once again, it's where the main push is. But they don't really see themselves getting anywhere. All of this is desert. The only like important parts are like here. So they kind of want to get some allies in this too. So they tell Molly, hey, join it and we'll give you some land. Molly agrees and begins to push into Niger. And with this, I mean, Niger can try to protect themselves, but the red team armies combined with uh, Mali's proximity, and they aren't going to last very long. All of their important land is uh, next, and yeah, they, they lose. That's about pretty quick war. Really is just a quick war. And now in this scenario, Mali wanted more, but sadly for them... They couldn't kill off Niger, or else there would be no point to them having a country anymore. So they only gained some p land. It's good land, but... Niger is allowed to keep some of their most important land. There we go. This kind of North African something-something. I'm not very good with names, if you hadn't noticed yet has now expanded it themselves quite a bit, becoming a pretty important player in the world. Still not as influential as the two rivals, the West and the East. But hey, they are doing well for themselves. And I think that's enough wars in Africa because we are almost ready to kick off World War III. Before that, we're just gonna have a few more events happening. That is over here in the Americas, where we see El Salvador finally joining into this kind of Latin alliance. It's only going down to here, but I mean, it's probably still going to be called Mexico, but it's between all these Central American countries and Mexico. So let's begin with the big war, which is going to be multiple parts, one in this video, one in the next get it started if you're wondering how this is going to start there are a lot of scenarios one here in the middle east but with the gulf that wouldn't really activate the west in serbia that's likely with kosovo that's an option 
Ukrainian border po- um like where they are or Russia trying to send equipment into Kaliningrad that could work maybe something between North and South Korea hmm, let's see there are so many options but I think we're gonna start it with Serbia and if you're wondering how this is gonna start it is going to be Serbian troops uh, entering into Kosovo and if you didn't know the West recognized Kosovo so they were allowed into the alliance and Serbia what have you done You have just unleashed probably the most powerful force in the world. Actually, yeah, pretty much the most powerful force in the world. 100. This is not going to be fun for you, Serbia. That's all I have to say to you. This is not going to be fun. We see Canada join in. Greenland and Iceland. That happens. We see Colombia and Venezuela joining in. We see Australia and New Zealand joining in. The Philippines join in. Taiwan, Japan. And South Korea. And of course, Hong Kong. So... Serbia's at war with the West. What's going to happen here is Serbia has a defense, a defense and attack treaty with Russia, and Russia is able to call in all of their allies. There we go. This war just escalated a lot. Up, oh, and I forgot to color in Azerbaijan. They are part of this new Western alliance. We see. All of the red team joining in. And we actually see that the red team has recruited Myanmar, Laos, Cambodia, and Uzbekistan. Although Afghanistan is still impossible to get on their side, as they really just don't want to join. Somebody who does want to join in, maybe something over here, or something over here. But for now, this is the war and actually, yeah, let's get a few more countries involved. Palestine joins against Israel. Saudi Arabia against Iran. With that, all of the Gulf Shield joins in. We see India joining against Pakistan. Vietnam on the blue team. Oh, forgot to color in that island. And, I mean, for now, that's it. But, oh, and Cuba was a part of the Eastern Alliance. Forgot to color them in earlier. But yeah, for now, that's it. Let's go ahead and begin. First things first, Serbia doesn't exist anymore. Now that is just blue team. Kaliningrad, I mean, it still exists, but it's very weak and it is falling. Belarus attempts to reconnect with Kaliningrad, but it is overall too slow, as the blue team had a very good defense over here. Meanwhile, down here in the Middle East, we see Turkey attempt to push across to meet up with Azerbaijan, but Azerbaijan is getting rolled over by Iran and Russia, which eventually leads to them beginning to push into Turkey, who is now beginning an operation to meet up with Saudi Arabia and Israel and all of them. They take out Palestine and about half of Syria before beginning to push into Iraq. And here is where one of the major events in this war happens, as it has been going on for a little while. But it's semi-contained. I mean, this isn't really contained, is it? But it is going to expand even more, and that happens when this new North African uh, alliance joins in. And we actually see Mauritania joining them. We also see uh, the Central African Republic and Benin joined their alliance as well, as they see it as a way for these previously colonized African nations to attack the European colonizers who they think destroyed them. And they recognize as still being imperial and whatever, whatever. Meanwhile, we see Cuba, Cuba basically just ceasing to exist. Oh, why are the Bahamas colored in? Well, I guess the USA took the Bahamas. They probably would be in the ocean by now, but same with, like, the Maldives, Cape Verde, 
of those countries, but let's just go ahead and ignore that. Meanwhile, we see Morocco pushing down the Mauritanian coast, taking the whole thing, with Morocco being a pretty powerful nation in this scenario. Meanwhile, though, we see the red team sending in specialized divisions into the Algerian Sahara, and we see them beginning to push into old Libyan lands. We see a stalemate on the Egyptian-Israeli border, but that does lead to Iran being able to push back, as Israeli troops are no longer helping out the blue team. This also leads to more push into Turkey. And over here, I didn't really talk about it last time, but India and Pakistan are just exchanging land. Pakistan is being helped by China to take over northern India, pushing into the east, pushing into Myanmar. It's just one big war. But the blue team decides that it's not big enough, so while a few other events are happening, they want to call in Thailand, basically. It'll help them secure Southeast Asia and have a foothold against China and meet up with India. It would be fantastic for them. So Vietnam and some other divisions from other countries team up to basically just take over all of Cambodia and Laos, which goes pretty well. And after promising Thailand some land, Thailand agrees to join in. With this, Myanmar is just screwed, really. Nothing they can do. Like, nothing at all. Uh, the entire coastline is taken by Thailand and India. And now it's basically just China holding them off. With this, though, oh, Yemen still exists. Not anymore. And also, considering that this North African, I guess, alliance joined in, their enemies slash rivals, the East Africans, also go ahead and join in. So yeah, that's another big part to this war. Who would have guessed? Meanwhile, we see a few more countries join the North African alliance. We see the Congo joining in. Um, Angola joins in. Togo, Burkina Faso. Guinea, and Ghana, they all join in, and now it's just absolute mayhem in the world, but I think this is a good place to stop it, so if you'd like to see it, like for part two, and subscribe if you'd like this series to go on, and I'll see you all next time.